Okay, so it's been a month I have been using the OnePlus Nord 4 as my primary device. So while I am kind of used to flagship because my job demands it, I've been using the S24 Ultra, the Samsung Z Flip, uh, the Fold, a lot of the flagships. Uh, I promise I did not miss the flagships because the Nord 4 kind of completes all of my you know, needs. But that's what I like about the OnePlus Nord 4. It's not trying to be a flagship killer over here. It's just getting the basics right, which is exactly what you should be looking for in a smartphone if you're looking for a phone in the sub 30k category just get the basics right but again the indian market is kind of brutal because sometimes even the basics are not enough for people and they want that x factor in their phone and you know want the best bargain but does the oneplus Nord 4 have that kind of an X factor. Oh, by the way, if you're looking to buy the OnePlus Nord 4, I'm giving you a better option. There is a giveaway that I'm running on Fiverr. 10 Nord 4 phones to give away. You want to know the contest details? The link is in the description. Have a look at the video and have a chance to win a OnePlus Nord 4. Let's continue with the video now. Hey guys, this is Cyrus. Welcome to Fiverr by India today. And in this video, I'm going to give you a comprehensive uh, lowdown of the OnePlus Nord 4 and whether you should buy it or not because I've been using this phone for about a month and I'm going to give you a perspective into the performance, into the uh, features, the software updates, the camera, the battery, everything that you need to know if you're looking to buy a phone in the sub 30k segment and whether the OnePlus Nord 4 should be an option for you or not. Let's get started. All right, first up, the use of metals on phones is mostly reserved for the premium segment, I feel. But again, there is a reason that mid-range or budget phone use polycarbonate and glass because uh, I think the best reason is it that it saves costs. Also, uh, plastic has its advantages, by the way. The signal reception is kind of better compared to metal as metal can interfere with the uh, reception in the antennas in the phone. And also, you know, plastic phones tend to be lighter. But OnePlus has made sure at least one of these issues is resolved because uh, signal and reception are very important. And I'll talk more about that later. Now, this is a unibody metal design. It feels very premium in the hand. Yes, it is susceptible to a bit of scratches in the back in the long run, by the way. But uh, I think it looks very shiny and very premium. And the use of metal kind of, uh, you know, just completes that look of the phone. While it is slippery in the hand, if you're using it without the cover, I would recommend use the cover because the metal kind of, the polished look and feel just makes the phone slip out of your hand. And if heavier phones is a deal breaker for you, then I will not recommend the OnePlus Nord 4 because the metal kind of makes this phone a bit heavy. The glass in the upper half around the camera module just adds to the overall sheen of the phone and there is some chrome embellishment on the camera module. So yes, from the back, it just looks very good. It just stands out from the crowd. Now this phone uses a compact uh, shape and uses U-shaped antennas inside which have been placed strategically around the phone. Even the camera module has been moved. Now this way, the 5G network experience on the phone isn't compromised as per OnePlus. And I didn't face a lot of call drops or network drop. Now this is the gunmetal design, what OnePlus calls it and has all the ports and speakers uh, at the bottom uh, with the volume rocker and the uh, power button positioned perfectly towards the right of the phone. While my hands are relatively larger, uh, I think using it for people with smaller hands would, would be a bit overwhelming and uh, you know, might not be easy because uh, if you're using both hands, then texting would be easier. But if you are smaller hands, texting with one hand could be a bit difficult. Now the other slider is always a welcome addition on the OnePlus uh, devices. In fact, other phones should also take a cue from uh, you know what OnePlus is doing. It just makes switching between the silent and the volume profile just easier. But the one feature surprisingly that I ended up using the most is the IR blaster. A lot of the appliances in my home are now being controlled using the Nord 4 and it just saves me cost. I don't have to spend on all of those AAA batteries and I've just like thrown away all of my remotes uh, I think I'll have to maybe use them later when I give the phone back. The SIM tray uh, can house two SIMs, so people with multiple numbers won't have any problem. They can use both the numbers to WhatsApp and switching between networks on this device is not that difficult. 
And I feel this is a comprehensive design, has everything included, even IP65 water resistance rating. And that too, in this price segment, uh, you shouldn't have anything to complain about. That's a good addition to have. Now, there were times that I was using the phone in the in the in the shower and don't don't try to derive anything dirty out of it. It is nothing dirty. Uh, I just like to play a little music when I'm in the shower. What's wrong with that? But the good thing is the Aqua Touch on the phone's display kind of works like a charm because when I was using it, there were no ghost touches and I was getting plenty of good accuracy. So overall, this is a good design to have on the OnePlus Nord 4 and I think in the sub 30k segment, you are really standing out with this design. Now the phone comes with a 6.7 inch AMOLED display which is good for content consumption and gaming. Now what good is in this display is now it comes with HDR, Ultra HDR support which means you get enhanced colors, vibrancy, the brightness and the contrast are just richer and you can enjoy all forms of high quality content on the OnePlus Nord 4. The fact that it is now firing 450 pixels per inch which is just a shy under some of the uh, flagship phones you get the S24 and the uh, X100 Pro which fire about 500 plus a little uh, above that and OnePlus says that it is now backed by Pro XDR technology which means using machine learning the uh, phone analyzes the content and then adjusts the brightness and uh, the clarity of the uh, of the content that you're watching so I was able to have a very good experience watching uh, Netflix videos hot star shows even some of the uh, games uh, football or cricket I wanted to watch on the phone and it was a very good experience and having an AMOLED display backed by HDR technology it just makes the deal sweeter. Now the fact is if you're watching content under harsh light it might be a bit I would say uh, in fact no it won't be a problem because most of the phones today come with 4500 nits of peak brightness and honestly I didn't have any problems with the OnePlus Nord 4 because its rating in terms of nits is still relatively lesser but even at peak brightness you get good clarity and the best part is you're getting 94% screen to body ratio and on this display that is more than enough what more could you ask for? There's enough screen size here. Now, what really impressed me is the uh, dimming that is available on the phone, which almost brings the brightness under 90 nits, which is like excellent. Now, it's good that you can schedule the dark mode and the eye comfort modes that tweak the color tone and the, of the display in such a way that your eyes are not strained. You can set the refresh rate, by the way, into dynamic. So between zero to 120 hertz, which is ideally what you should be doing I would recommend that because on auto mode, as you keep switching between content, the dynamic uh, refresh rate changes and it just makes the viewing of content much more immersive. I like that the company has given uh, a lot of these cool animated always on display options that you can customize. I mean, it just adds to the overall aesthetic of the phone. But again, remember, it takes some of the juice from your uh, battery. So if you're okay with that, then and then only turn this on. It just looks good on the screen, but it's taking some toll on the battery. So overall, I think the display is fantastic for watching content, playing games, and you will have no complaints. You're getting a good experience with the Nord 4 display, and it's one of the best you can find in the segment. While many would not know that the Nord 4 has been certified by the TUV SUD, which means you're getting the best performance from this phone for up to six years, which basically means that the phone will not lag in this time despite the updates, despite the battery health going down, which basically implies if you're running general tasks like applications, games, which I've been doing for the past month, the Nord 4 has been very impressive. The Oxygen OS 14 experience is refreshing and I did not have any trouble navigating the interface. While uh, I would have loved to have options like customizing the size of the widgets and the size of the icons, what you kind of see these days in the new iOS, but uh, maybe OnePlus might push an update in, uh, in a few months or even years. I think that is, an, uh, that is a feature that you should bring to the ecosystem. You even get four years of software updates and two years of security updates with this phone, which means your phone will stay relevant with the latest software uh, for at least four to five years. And that is a big, big deal for a lot of people who are wanting to buy a phone in this price segment. Even if someone isn't tech savvy, I'm sure a lot of people who are wanting to buy phones for their elders can consider the Nord because the interface is quite, I mean, gimmick free, uh, 
bloat free. You don't have to worry about anything. It's very simple to use. The OnePlus Nord 4 is powered by the Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 3 mobile platform that also offers some AI features. Now, apps launch fast. It's able to manage uh, the power consumption better. It also has an improved graphics processing unit, which just enhances your gaming experience. I was shuffling emails, social media applications, opening multiple Google Chrome tabs, running apps in the background. And I was doing all of this while playing my BGMI round and I did not face even a single stutter or lag, which just is a testament to the kind of performance the Nord 4 has. Now there is a 12 GB version of this phone, which gets you more power. And if uh, people run high end tasks, have a lot of benchmarks to run, basically a lot of heavy loaded stuff, then go for the 12 RAM uh, variant. Otherwise, 8 GB of RAM on the basic variant, I think it's just fine, it will suffice. You don't have to really upgrade to the 12 GB. Now, I ran a few benchmarks on the phone. I uh, saw how it fares in terms of the synthetic numbers because as uh, real world experiences are more important, I think synthetic numbers are also more important to see. And uh, since the chipset is new, there aren't many phones in the market that had the 7 Plus Gen 3. There is only the Realme GT60 in the market. We thought, let's just have a look at how it fares in terms of the competition in this price segment. and. There is not a lot to separate these two in terms of Antutu and Geekbench scores, as you can see in the graphic. I also ran the PC Mark test on the Nord 4 and uh, it clocked the battery life test uh, 12 hours and 21 minutes, which is a good, good score. And 14,000 plus uh, is quite decent. What this means is that you can run multiple applications at the same time. And even if you overload the phone to a point that the CPU throttles, uh, you will still be able to get good enough battery life without compromising on the performance. Now, gaming on the OnePlus Nord 4 is quite good. The fact that it comes with a dedicated gaming engine speaks volumes about how OnePlus is serious about its gaming prowess. Now, the game engine, which is embedded into the uh, into the phone, you just have to swipe down from the right, gives you a boost of performance. It can also help you change your voice, give you real-time system statistics, block calls when you're gaming. I just hate it when that happens, by the way. Uh, and not only that, you can get a bump in the frame rate as well, because playing BGMI up to 90 FPS in a phone, you know, a lot of phones in this segment can't do it, but you can do it on the OnePlus Nord 4. Just tells you it's capable of playing high definition games. And if you're a gamer, you will definitely love the Nord 4. Here we are testing the microphone sensitivity of the Nord 4. As you can see, the graph is constant around the 50 dB mark in the quiet zone and picks up little noises in the room. When we play the demo video, you can see that it spikes between 80 to 90 decibels, which shows that the microphone is quite effective. So overall, comprehensive performer, the OnePlus Nord 4, and there is no sort of a deal breaker in this segment. You're getting a clean UI, best performance in this segment, and you should definitely go for the OnePlus Nord 4 if you're looking a power user in the sub 30K segment. Now for a mid-range phone, I think uh, the OnePlus Nord 4 is a good camera system. The rear houses a 50 megapixel uh, primary Sony sensor, which is complemented by an 8 megapixel ultra wide sensor. Now, we'll not talk about a lot of the specifications here. I'll just show you some of the camera samples that I've played while using this phone, which will give you an idea of what the phone's camera can do. Let's check it out. First off, we take a look at this shot that's been clicked in standard mode and that too in daylight. It's got good dynamic range and the color accuracy is also good. If you zoom into the image, then also the quality doesn't drop. The same shot in the wide angle at 120 degree FOV gets you a decent shot without a lot of color shift. The same shot in 2X is also impressive. The image doesn't burn if you zoom into the picture and uh, you do notice a slight quality drop. Same way pictures clicked indoors do struggle with a bit of colors. And when you zoom into the shots, you can see there is a bit of a boost in terms of saturation. In these shots, which were clicked in standard mode, you can see a bit of dullness in the colors and the contrast in comparison to the white shot. Still a good composition. Macro shots come out nice using this phone and you can easily experiment if you are that adventurous and creative. The camera also comes with an EV mode which can control the exposure. So if you are in a situation where it's overexposed, you can use this. Portrait shots come out nice, uh, although this phone doesn't have a telephoto lens, but the AI inside can help 
with depth separation and also the blur effect in the background. The good thing is that the photo editor offers an AI object eraser which you can use to erase unwanted objects from the photos and the results are quite decent. The OnePlus 4 low light shots impress me a lot. The colors retain their own clarity and accuracy and there is no compromise even if there is no light. Here are some of the samples that we clicked. The rear camera also comes with OIS and EIS which means you will get good quality shots even if you are recording videos. However, the front doesn't offer any kind of video stabilization that we liked and you can see this in the demo. Yes, the results are a bit decent when you're recording with the rear camera, but the front camera stabilization is a bit iffy. This is a very handy feature for me, OnePlus Nord, which is a dual video mode. If you have such a lot of content, create content, and you want to know that your audience knows that you want to define something. For example, if I'm showing you a car, then it will be easier for me if I'm using this mode. So I think this is a very handy feature in a phone if you're describing something. आपको एडिट्स में ज़्यादा कुछ प्रॉब्लम नहीं होती एंड आई थिंक दिस इज़ अ ग्रेट फीचर टू हैव सेल्फी शॉट्स आर डिसेंट इनफ इवन इफ यू आर क्लिकिंग इन लो लाइट द फ्रंट 16 मेगापिक्सल कैमरा ऑफर्स 1080p 30fps रिकॉर्डिंग एंड नो 4k हियर स्टेबलाइजेशन इज़न दैट इफेक्टिव स्पेशली व्हेन यू रिकॉर्डिंग इन लो लाइट दीस आर सम ऑफ द एरियाज दैट आई थिंक OnePlus कैन इंप्रूव Overall, I feel that OnePlus has really improved in the camera department, especially for the Nord series. Now, it doesn't have the backing of the Hasselblad tech that you usually get in flagship OnePlus phones, but I don't think it needs it. In this price segment, if you're looking for a good camera performance, I think the OnePlus Nord covers uh, all of that department. Yes, you won't get those uh, overblown, saturated uh, images, which are, by the way, social media ready. You get on the Vivo V series. Uh, I think those pictures are great. But if you want real colors, real images, which you can edit later, I think the OnePlus Nord 4 kind of uh, meets all the needs in that department and you won't be disappointed with this camera system, be it selfies, videos, or basic photography. All right, battery time. OnePlus phones are known for their stellar battery performance. Even the OnePlus Nord 4 kind of uh, sets an example for a lot of the other phones in the market with a 5500 mAh battery that supports quick charge. Now, charging this phone is insanely fast. I had drained the battery while I was running my benchmarks and I was playing on multiple, multiple games, high-end games, by the way, and I squeezed all of the battery juice out. I was down to 0%, but when I plugged my uh, phone using the 100 watt SuperWook charger that you get inside the box, the phone charged from 0 to 100 in just uh, 28 minutes. That's incredible. I mean, just look at the kind of battery charge you're getting in such a, just so little time. That's crazy. For, for someone like me who needs quick charge, uh, it, it's having it in a phone is quintessential. Now, I'm someone who travels a lot, goes out for shoots, have a lot of events to attend, have a lot of applications running. It's a, it's a demanding job. So. For me, being able to charge my phone up to 50% in just 10 to 12 minutes is a big deal. And if you want a phone like that... Now, a lot of people worry that in the long run, it might deplete your battery health because fast charge kind of does that. Yes, it does that. Fast charging does affect your battery in the long run. But OnePlus has kind of added a few software and machine learning intelligence has ensured that you get a few software tweaks which can enhance your overall battery health and you will get more years in the long run. So if you're planning to use your phone more than four to five years, I don't know how many people do that, but if you're still planning to do it, don't worry about your phone's battery. It's taken care of. Now running the PC Mark battery drain test, I got more than 12 hours from the Nord 4, which means in regular use, you will easily be able to get more than a day's charge. If you're using heavy applications, uh, you just have to charge your phone at the end of the day. And in 30 minutes, you're getting a full charge. There is no deal breaker. You are getting a fantastic battery with the Nord 4 over here. So it's time for the verdict. Now I'm sure a lot of people go on Google and type which is the best phone to buy under 30,000. I'm sure a lot of people might have searched before watching this video. Uh, I have an answer for you, by the way. The Nord 4. Now the Nord series has really upped the game in the sub 30,000 category with this smartphone. And I think it's a complete device to have uh, for a lot of people who are looking for utility and performance. Now. Uh, 
like the title of the video when it says get the basics right, the OnePlus Nord does that smartly because yes, it has a few features that enhance the overall experience, but you're also getting enhancements in the camera department and the battery. Powerful processing, uh, you have a decent UI, a good camera experience. So overall in the long run, oh, by the way, the software updates also four years and two years of security just makes this a complete package. So in our fiber rating, I will give the Nord 4 a solid 8.5, which means if you're looking for a phone in the sub 30K category, don't think twice. This is a good option to have. That's it for this video. Hope you liked it. Please go in the comment section. Let us know what you think about the Nord 4. Is it something that you would be looking for in the market? Oh, by the way, I have a giveaway running where I'm giving away 10 Nord 4 devices. If you want to know how to enter that contest, go into the Fiber channel and have a look at that video. I'll also post the link to that video in the description and also it's right here. You can have a look. So participate in that contest and uh, get a chance to win a Nord 4 because uh, why pay for it? Just enter the contest and uh, have a chance to win. The side is saying goodbye. Stay tuned to Fiber by India today. We'll be back with more tech right here. So, adios.